Objection. 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 Would you like to have a drink with me Friday night? Yeah, I'll have a drink with you. I can't quite figure out what Bonnie's deal is. You know, we got nothing in common. We spend all our time yelling at one another, and uh, it's hard to see a future. So <laughs> how do you like your eggs? Take a rain check. Okay. I slept with Bonnie. Well, hearty congratulations to the both of you. Ed threw himself at you. You didn't want him, and now that you may not be able to have him, now you want him. You and Carol Nessie are not just friends. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. How about we try to check all emotional baggage at the door? Okay. Eight and a half, please. Coming right up. Can I do it? You think you're ready? I've been watching all morning. Go right ahead. Fresh as a mountain breeze. Thanks, lady. How'd I do? Well, 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 look who's here. Who's that guy? They call him Big Rudy. I haven't seen him since you sold me the bowling alley. Big Rudy! <laughs> At last, the great lion returns to his den. Phil, 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 how I've missed you. And I, you, Big Rudy. Ed Stevens, my esteemed successor as captain of this creaky old schooner we call Stucky Bowl. How goes it? Goes well, Big Rudy. What can I do for you? Nothing, nothing. Just came back for a visit. Howdy do, miss. Where's the rest of my crew? Our Rudy! Hand me a big stegosaurus. Come here. <laughs> How's that novel going? Still stuck on chapter eight. <laughs> Shirley. Hello, Rudolph. There's a long and complicated history. Uh, hey, everybody! Big Rudy's back! Drinks are on me! <laughs> Huzzah! I'll, I'll spring for the beer nuts. Everybody, I would like to meet two very good friends of mine who might be interested in joining our little book club. This is Carol and Molly. It's Miranda, George and Wanda, Jeff and Barbara. Hi. Hi, everybody. Please, no need to stand up. <laughs> okay, you two, before we let you join us, you're going to have to answer one question designed to test your basic literary knowledge. Uh, Nance, I didn't know you were friends with Alex Trebek Jr. Oh, he's a... Here's the question. What's the first line of Moby Dick? Call me Ishmael. Ishmael, what's the first line of Moby Dick? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is the lamest joke I have ever heard. Yeah, well, stick around. It's going to get a lot lamer. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Fine. How can I help you? Uh, so I saw Big Rudy in here the other day. Yep. You know, uh, when uh, Big Rudy ran the place, if you bowled over a 250, he gave you a free pack of cigarettes. Is that right? I just bowled a 253. Shirley, give this nice gentleman a free pack of cigarettes. Excuse me. Make it two. Actually, I need a lawyer. Five years ago, I started a rock band called The Solids. All right. I see you guys play The Smiling Goat. You're good. Thanks. I kind of thought so, too. Why? What happened? Did you guys break up? Worse. For five years, I put everything I had into that band. I wrote all the songs. I got all the gigs. And then last week, the other three members told me they were kicking me out. Why? This creepy manager guy has been sniffing around. He went behind my back and convinced them that they need a new lead singer. He told them that he could get some record company big shot to come to their next gig, but only if they replaced me. That's rough. 
it, that's rough, but I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Well, I know you can't make them let me back in the band. The reason I'm here is I want them to stop playing my songs. They're continuing to perform the songs that you wrote? That's right. Songs you wrote by yourself? Yes. Huh. Good or bad, they're my songs, Mr. Stevens. Call me Ed. Look, is there anything on paper that proves that you wrote these songs? My notebook. It's all right there. I'll bring it in. We'll get to work. Really? Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Ed. Sure. Yes? Mr. Stevens is here to see you. Oh, send him in. In the criminal justice system, Bonnie Haynes' day is divided into two separate yet equally important parts, prosecuting offenders and having lunch. This is her story. I'm ready. Let's eat. <laughs> okay, all right. Piggyback. Hop on. No, 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 no. I don't want to piggyback. Right, come on. No, but it's the early phase of our relationship. You know, we're supposed to be frolicking, you know, and romping. Frolicking and romping. No, I'm not into public romping. You think I can't lift you? Huh? Is that what you think? You think I can't lift you? You feel a little unwieldy? Clean squad. <laughs> so, um, you know that guy Jeff from the book club? Who, Mr. Call Me Ishmael? Yeah. Well, it turns out he is a calculus teacher at Stuckeyville Academy. He's supposed to be really smart. Miles, you running a background check? Maybe. I just think he's kind of cute. <laughs> all right. Love is in the air for Miss Molly Hudson. Okay, let's not get crazy, all right? I, I don't even think he really noticed me. Oh, come on. No, I think you should ask him out. He seemed really... What? <laughs> and Bonnie. Well, so? Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I thought you were comfortable with this. I thought I was too, but I'm not. Oh. What is it? Nothing. <laughs> his curly brown locks lift me through my days. My soul retracts from his steely gaze. He destroys me in so many ways. But it might kill me if he stays. <laughs> That's great. What do you call that one? Watching him go. It's about my ex-boyfriend, Gideon. Some of the world's most powerful art has been born out of heartbreak. Amanda, did you bring that notebook? Oh, uh, no, I couldn't find it at home. I must have left it in the practice room. Well, don't forget. I came by to tell you that the Solids are performing tonight with their new singer. Good, good. I'll drop by and see him. I'll see if I can talk some sense into him. That'd be great. Yeah. Maestro. Ah, Big Rudy. <laughs> Yeah, back for another trip down memory lane. Ed. Yep. Can Big Rudy bend your ear for a moment? Absolutely. Ed, I have a confession to make. Hmm? I didn't drop by the other day just to say howdy. I came because I heard how great the old Stucky Bowl was doing, and it is. You've turned this place into a regular bush gardens. <laughs> well, thank you, Big Rudy. Ed, I want to buy the place back from you. When I sold it, business was shaky, but now you got the renovations, you got your upscale clientele, you got the whole lawyer gimmick, which I gotta admit, I don't exactly get. The point is, you've done a great job. You deserve a reward. Now, I am prepared to offer you 10% more than what you paid me. Well, thanks, Big Rudy, but I'm not interested in selling the place. I enjoy running it. 15%. You'll be farting through silk. Well, that sounds... Tempting, but no. Sorry, Big Rudy. Stucky Bull is not for sale. That's okay, Ed. I have a feeling you'll come around. You know, when Big Rudy was running this place, he never made a small before. Yeah, felt like the place was a dump. Hey, don't count your chickens. How does that expression even apply? Hi. Ed? Hey, hey, Cap. Hi, what are you doing here? Well, I, um... <laughs> Look, I, I don't mean to embarrass you, but... I saw you outside the pie shop today. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Miles and I were going to go to the pie shop then. We changed our minds the last minute. We, Carol, we were... stop. Stop. Look, I know what this is about. What's that? You're uncomfortable around me and Bonnie. <laughs> To be ridiculous. Hey, look, it's fine. It's okay. It makes perfect sense, especially after all we've been through, right? And it's awkward for me, too, and for Bonnie. Okay, maybe I panicked a little bit. Look, I want you to come out to dinner with Bonnie and me. 
bed. No, I just think that the best way to get through this awkward phase is if we, you know, we all start spending some time together, don't you think? Yeah, uh, Look, but... it'll be fine, it'll be fine. We'll sit down, we'll have a few drinks, have a few laughs, and put this, put this nonsense behind us. Can I bring Molly? Sure, come on! Okay. Come on! Come on! I said okay! I know, I just like saying, come on! Oh, that Bonnie <laughs> Hain is a very fortunate woman. <laughs> The solid should be taking the stage any minute now. Hey, is that Hillary Sanders? Remember Hillary Sanders? She's a freshman, we're seniors. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember Hillary oh, yeah. Sanders. Mm hmm. I think she's coming over here. Yep. Ten bucks to be speaking a British accent. Yeah, like ten, ten bucks, Mike. Up. Hey, guys. Long time no see. Hey, Hillary, how are you? Great, great. Hey, Mike. Hello, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just visiting from Pittsburgh. Sure. So what are you guys up to these days? Uh, I'm a lawyer here in town, and I bought the bowling alley. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Mike? Well, I'm a doctor, Hillary. Oh. And you're married. Tell her who you're married, Mike. That's, that's, that's right. That's right. I married, I married Nancy, and we've got a lovely little, uh, little daughter. <laughs> well, I, I gotta go and, uh, and meet somebody. Sure. It was great to see you guys again. Absolutely. Nice to see you, too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Solids. Hello, Stuckyville. How's it going? This curly brown lock slipped me through my day. My soul retracts from his steely gaze, he destroys me. Hey, guys. Hey. This is a great set. Great. That's what you call it, right? Set? Yeah, that's what we call it. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. My name is Ed Stevens. I'm Amanda's lawyer. She's going to sue us for kicking her out of the band? Carrie, this is awesome. It's just like behind the music. Um, look. Carrie, Carrie, is it? Listen, you don't have to play with a man if you don't want to. That's your choice. But then you can't use her song. It's just not fair. I'll tell you what isn't fair. It isn't fair that we've been at this for five years, practicing three times a week, busting our asses with the wrong lead singer. That's not the issue. The issue is that her songs, they're her property. Look, if you have a problem, you should talk to our manager. Here's this card. Okay, thanks. I will. And the solids were soon to find out that fame has a price. Shut up, Barry. Hey, Carol, welcome to Fondue Fest 2000. Dance, it's 2001. Yeah, but it doesn't have the right rhythm. Miles, guess what you get to do Wednesday night? Have dinner with Ed, me, and Bonnie Hain. Oh, I would love to, but I can't. What are you talking about? You have to, you must. Honey, I have got like 60 tests to grade. There's just no way. Okay. Nancy! Uh, Nancy! Mike and I have plans with the Jacobsons, honey. I'm sorry. What am I gonna do? What? what? I, I can't go there by myself and, and just sit there the entire night watching the, the two of them stare into each other's eyes all, you know, like, like a couple of... I, I'm gonna cancel. I'm gonna cancel. Oh, oh, that's Jeff from the reading group. He left his backpack here. Excuse me. Oh, well. Mr. Calculus Teacher Man is in the hay house. Hey! I'm sorry, I'm a dog. Oh, God, it's no problem. Got it in the living room. Come on in. What are you doing Wednesday night? Nancy, you're a happily married woman. No, it's not for me. How does she make that stuff? It's amazing. I know, I know. Yeah. Hey, Nance, how do you make this fondue? Mexican Velveeta, just heat and serve. Hi, Carol. Hi, Molly. Hey. Hi. Hi, Jeff. Carol, I just totally solved all your problems. I told him all about it, and Jeff here has agreed to have dinner with you. Wow. Um, thanks. That's great. Thank you. I'm glad to pitch in. Don't stand too close to that lizard, all right? It's an $80 lizard in there, yeah? 
little Chilean bitches that keep dying on me. It's all right. Uh, I'm looking for a, a Jordy Hasler of uh, Hasler Management. Yeah, I'm Jordy Hasler. You're the rock manager? You manage the solids. Yeah, hey, hey, you think I'm kidding? Step away from the lizard. Thank you. Yeah, I manage the solids. You want to book them? They don't do bot mitzvahs. Bar, yes, bot, no. You got to draw the line somewhere, right? Huh? Actually, I'm Ed Stevens, Amanda Bay's lawyer. Oh, for God's sakes. Look, the band has got to stop playing Amanda songs. Uh-huh. Well, now is not the time to learn new songs. Not with Bruce Pizzuti coming to hear them. Who's Bruce Pizzuti? He's only Ben Pizzuti's brother. Who's Ben Pizzuti? Ben Pizzuti, my friend. He's the vice president of marketing at Suncoast Records. What's Suncoast Records? It's a record company. I see. Listen, Mr. Hasler, Amanda put her heart and soul into those songs. Those songs are hers. All right, that's it, buddy. That's it. Get out your checkbook. You just bought yourself a lizard. I can't talk to you now, okay? What the hell are these things? I'm thinking ferrets. Ferrets? Well, how'd they get in here? You. Did you do this? Me? You did, didn't you? I should be offended, but I'm not, because I know how stressful it is to own a bowling alley. So stressful. Are you trying to strong arm me into selling this place? Who do you think you are, Maya Lansky? Have a pleasant afternoon. Miss Bays, how many of the songs in the Solids repertoire were written by you? All of them. All of them? By you and you alone? That's right. When you're writing, how do you work? I have a notebook that I use to jot down ideas when they come and develop them when I have time. Is that notebook here in the courtroom? No. Why not? It's gone. Gone? Well, that's too bad. How long have you had the notebook? Since I was 15. Wow. Have you ever lost it before? No. When was the last time you saw this notebook? I left it in our practice room last week. Your practice room? Does Carrie Thomas have access to this practice room? Yes, she does. Interesting. Objection. Your Honor, this notebook just happened to disappear the week of a trial in which it was to serve as the sole piece of physical evidence. I find it interesting, don't you? Objection sustained. OK, nothing further. I just found it interesting. It's interesting. Miss Thomas, did Amanda Bays write all these songs by herself? Absolutely not. She wrote them with me. She's lying. Describe how a typical work session might go. We'll take the song, Watching Him Go. The idea came to me after a big fight with my boyfriend, Jim Peterson. I wrote the melody and most of the lyrics, and then the next day, Amanda came and helped me out with the bridge. <gasps> this is crazy. I wrote that song about Gideon. So you'd characterize yourself and Miss Bays as a songwriting team. Exactly. Thank you. Bonnie. Hi. Hi, Carol. <laughs> Hi. Oh, that's a great dress. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. I love that necklace. It's, um, um, pearly. It's pearly. Hey, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Sorry I'm late. So waiting on Molly? Oh, no, actually, Molly couldn't make it, so I invited somebody else to join us. Great. Who's that? Um, his name is Jeff, and, oh, he's right here. I'll, I'll make the introductions. Um, Jeff, this You this must be the famous Mr. Ed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Alexander. Hey, Jeff. And Bonnie? Yes. Oh, charm. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi, hon. Shall we? So, we walk into the Mercedes dealership, and we're looking at this beautiful $100,000 machine. And the salesman comes over and offers us a test drive. So I say, Carol, honey, <clears throat> You're going to be driving this thing as much as I will. Why don't you give it a whirl? And Carol, this is the cutest thing. She's so nervous about anything happening to the car that she's like driving five miles an hour. The traffic is backed up for blocks. <laughs> that, that never happened. <sighs> don't be embarrassed. It was adorable. 
Let's um, let's go to the bar and get a drink. Hey, uh, my chicken fingers would get cold. Let's go. Oh, okay. It's your honey. What can I get you? Tom Collins, slow gin, fizz. What are you doing? I'm doing the thing. What thing? You know the thing where you bring the guy on the double date so that the other guy gets jealous, you know? We're doing the thing. Aren't we just doing the thing? No. No, no we are. are. No, 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 no. We are not doing the thing. Oh, boy. I think Carol may be dating a grifter. Not a particularly talented grifter, but a grifter nonetheless. Ed, I have to tell you something. Mm-hmm. Well, a couple of months ago, I um, I applied for this clerkship with this really amazing judge. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And, um, and I got it. You did? Mm -hmm. you, that's great. That's, congratulations. Who's, who's the judge? Well, he's, he's a federal judge um, in Washington. Washington, wow. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, is, um, I have to leave this weekend. This weekend? Yeah. And, <clears throat> and that's it? Then after this, after this weekend, you're gone forever. Just like that. Well, Ed, this is, this is a, a great opportunity. I mean, this judge is like a personal hero of mine. Yeah, no. I just, <laughs> you, you kind of took me by surprise there. But no, it's, that's great. That's, uh, when did you hear about the clerkship? About a month ago. A month ago? A month ago? You heard about the clerkship a month ago, you're just telling me now? And I'm sorry. I'm not sure I understand any of this. Nancy kept telling me, Jeff, it's not a real mm -hmm. date. It's not a real date. Jeff, do you get it? It's not a real date. So, I mean, it's not so crazy for me to, you know, go and figure that you... It's crazy. I know. No. I'm an idiot. No, I'm crazy it's not. It's idiot. fine. It's fine. Come on. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go back to the table. We're going to sit down again, and it's going to be nothing at What's going on over there? I don't know. I really think that we should go have that drink. Maybe so. It's not like I did it this way on purpose. I didn't expect to, to meet you and for things to happen between us. No, 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 but you know, you did meet me and things did start to happen. And you didn't give a moment's thought that any of this would make me feel. You're just thinking about your big job and your big career and that's typical. You know, that's typical Bonnie Hain behavior. And if, if that's the way you feel. You know what, Bonnie, I... that's exactly how I feel. thing of all, the memory that's going to haunt me until the day I die, is that I called you hun. Oh, oh. hun! <laughs> Could it be any more embarrassing? Oh. I mean, I'm going to have to move to Tibet and become one of those monks that Richard Gere is always talking to. Yeah, really, it's fine. <laughs> I actually thought it was sort of cute. <laughs> no, it's not. I called you hun. Oh. It's a grave, grave mistake. Very, very grave. Oh, Jeff, you know, I had really fun time with you tonight, and, and this was not a night I thought was going to be particularly fun. Listen, Nancy couldn't have been clearer about tonight not being a date. Mm. Very, very clear. But maybe I could call you and, you know, actually have an official first date. I will not at any time call you hon. Oh, um, I would really, really like to go out with you again, but, uh, 
Can we keep something just between the two of us? Sure. It's about Molly. Molly? Mm-hmm. Um, Molly is my best friend. And the reason this wasn't an official date is, um, she saw you first. And she thinks you're really cute, so. She thinks I'm cute? Yeah. So, you should give Malls a call. She's amazing. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Ed, right? What's that mean? I don't know. You just seem to have dropped off the face of the earth. Hey, you're the one that walked out of that restaurant. Which is why I called you about ten times. I've been busy. I see. Look, I gotta get ready to get back into court. Look, is this really how you want this to end? Uh, I don't know why. How do you want this to end? I don't know. Nicely? N nicely. Okay, sure, yeah. Let's end it nicely. Oh, come on, Ed. I have to take this clerkship. It's a really big deal. I know you have to take it. I'm the last guy in the world that would want to hold you back. Then what are you so upset about? I'm upset because it hasn't crossed your mind for one minute, apparently, not to take it. Has it ever crossed your mind for one minute to ask me not to take it? No. And do you, do you know why it hasn't? Because we both know that if I did ask you, you'd still take it. Well, you know I have to take it. I know it. you have to take it, but you're not even conflicted about it. Wait a second. You know I have to take this job, but what you're upset about is the fact that I'm not agonizing over whether or not to take it, even though you yourself believe I should take no, it. Look, Bonnie, all right, forget it. Okay, just forget I say anything. Good luck in Washington. Good luck with a new job. Good luck with your incredible career. I, I hope you become president of the universe. That's all you seem to care about anyway. You can be mean. Mr. Peterson, what is your relationship to Carrie Thomas? She's my lady. To the best of your knowledge, who wrote the song, Watching Him Go? Carrie wrote that song about me. There's a lyric in the song that says, His curly brown locks lift me through my days. Mr. Peterson, what color is your hair? It's curly brown, baby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Curly brown locks, through my days, my soul retracts from his steely gaze. May I see your steely gaze, please, sir? <sighs> nope, not steely. Objection. And is anyone's soul retracting? Anyone? Is anyone soul retracting? Mine's not. Anyone? Objection, Your Honor. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It's as ridiculous as suggesting that simply because this man has brown hair that Carrie Thomas wrote that song. You've made your point, Mr. Stevens. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Nothing further. Malls, Malls. Oh, hey. Hi. Wow. I was looking for you. So let's hear it. How was the big non-date? Oh, oh, my gosh. It was so silly. Jeff tried to make Ed jealous. It was a complete disaster. <laughs> so he's a jerk? Oh, no. No, no. He's great, really. He's, he's funny, cute, smart. Very smart. And nothing happened between the two. No. No, I got to go to the dry cleaners. As a matter of fact, we talked about you. He said he thought you were funny. Really? Mm-hmm. I think you should give him a call. I prefer to play this coy, like a lioness majestically perched on the open grass plains of the Serengeti. It's learning town. Yeah. Mm. Now. Now, if Big Rudy tries another one of his little sabotage moves, we're going to catch each and every last frame of it on videotape, my friend. Tightening up bowling alley security? Hey, Cal. Hi. Whoa, you look great. Did you sneak off somewhere to get some work done? No. Hey, what happened to you the other night? You guys just sort of disappeared. Yeah, that was a whole thing. Hey, who's the new boyfriend? Oh, he's not a boyfriend. He sees Jeff. He's some guy from Nancy's book club. I don't know, Cal. I don't know. No, I don't know. It seemed to me you guys are really hitting it off there. <laughs> Laughing at the store. Yeah, right. Well, I'm not the one with the girlfriend, so why am I getting the third degree? Yeah, well, I'm not gonna have the girlfriend much longer. Ooh, a little trouble in paradise again? She, uh, 
She's leaving town. She had a clerkship in Washington. Oh, that good for her. Yeah, good for her. Wow. Wow what? Wow, you're really upset about this. I'm not. I mean, my, we barely know one another. So you're just gonna let her leave like that? Yeah. You know, Bonnie Haynes not the kind of woman who would sacrifice her career for a relationship. Hmm. Hmm, what? Oh, nothing. I just... I thought you said you were really starting to like this woman, and now... Now what? It just seems to me that if you really liked her, you wouldn't let her go without at least a little bit of a tussle. I mean... You're Ed. Aren't you the guy who, who puts on the suit of armor and, and makes the videos of himself and, and hires skywriters? You came. Curiosity is a tempting mistress. You and I are a lot alike, young Philip. While others are content to sleepwalk through their days, you and I like to suck on the pap of life and gulp down the milk of human wonder. That's from the great Gatsby. We are indeed blessed with the tastes of kings. Exactly. Which is why I must ask you a question. Is Ed giving you a piece of the action? I receive a weekly stipend, No, yes. no, no. I'm, I'm not talking about salaries. Salaries are for suckers. I'm talking about a, a percentage. Share, a share in the profits. No. Now, that's a damn travesty here. You give him good idea after good idea. You should be a partner by now. I used to give you good idea after good idea. You never made me a partner. That is because I was blind as a one-eyed maggot. Now, let me cut to the chase. I want to buy the bowling alley back. Ed does not want to sell. Now, the only way for me to get it is to run him out of business, which I will do in time. But it'll go a little faster if I have a little help from the inside. Do you understand what I'm saying? You want me to help you put Ed out of business? When I own the alley... You have a corner office and a piece of the pie. This is quite an ethical conundrum you've laid before me. Sticky web fraught with the pitfalls of human frailty. Can you see a man like Phil Stubbs handing out shoes for the rest of his life? Ed will just have to understand. This is business. It's not personal. Now what do you need me to do? Now, you're thinking smart. There's something on the security camera tape I think you should see. Security camera tape? Ooh, you got something? Did uh, Big Rudy come back? Watch. Watch. What exactly am I looking at here? That's Kenny. Huh? He stood motionless for five hours. Wow. Kenny is so talented. Amanda Bays may have started the solids. She may have gotten the gigs, handled the books, and lugged all the instruments. That doesn't give her tenure. The band's moving up in the world. She didn't make the cut. Happens all the time. Now, as for the songs, there is not one shred of evidence that supports her claim that she wrote them. They belong to the solids. And Amanda Bays is no longer one of the solids. <clears throat> Loyalty. Is there any of that left in the world anymore? Amanda Bays didn't just start the solids, she is the solids. And because Jordy Hasler, a guy who works in a pet store, waved a one in a million chance at a record deal in front of their faces, these three turned their backs on their friend. That's just plain not right. The songs are Amanda's, the band is Amanda's. Please don't let them take these things away from her. Thank you. Amanda Bay says she wrote the songs. Her former bandmates say that they were co-written by Carrie Thomas. Both parties have reason to lie. Neither has presented any hard evidence to support their claim. The burden of proof, however, is on Miss Bays. I therefore cannot stop the band, the Solids, 
from performing or recording these songs. My ruling is in favor of the defendants, Carrie Thomas, Barry Jessup, and Rob Draper. How much longer do we have to wait here? Relax. Be home any minute now. You know, Ed, I gotta say this, uh, not so sure about the, the superhero costume. What? No, I mean, a suit of armor, that made sense to me. A knight in shining armor, that's romantic, but this, not so much. But I'm Captain Stuckyville. Want her to stay in Stuckyville, and I'm Captain Stuckyville. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. I still think you should have gone with Zorro. Hey. There she is. Okay, look. Remember. When I run out there, you wait a full ten seconds. Then you shoot off them fireworks. Right, and what exactly do fireworks have to do with superheroes, Ed? Just do it. Okay. Go ahead, Aquaman. It's showtime. I can't. What? Hey, I didn't mean to... You look great, buddy. No, it's not that. I just... Come on, Mike, let's go. So much. So much for the scales of justice. You know, the truth is, I barely cared what happened in that courtroom. The damage was really done long before we got there. Are you start another band? I don't know. Maybe I'll go it solo. I'm not sure I'm cut out for the group dynamic. What are you guys doing here? We want you to play with us tomorrow. Why? We did some soul searching and we realized we were wrong. Where's Vanessa? Vanessa, the wonderkind who replaced me. She, uh... She, she got a better gig. A better gig? She'll be over in Jasper Town playing the big room at the Fuzzy Peach tonight. As they say, what goes around? I see. So you're not really apologizing, Carrie. You just need someone for tomorrow and for Ben Pizzuti's brother? No, that's not it. I was wrong to kick you out of the band. I mean, you're the heart and soul of the solids. What do you say? You gonna help us rock the Casbah tomorrow and show Ben Pizzuti's brother why we deserve a shot at the big time? What do you say, Amanda? No, thanks. Amanda. Amanda! You called? This is my last name. I know. I saw you in court today. I snuck in the back. You did? Yeah. I thought you were good. You almost won with no evidence. It's too bad. You know, people... I don't know how to be loyal anymore. They're just looking out for themselves. Is that for me? No. I'm not funny. I... Listen, I want you to stay. I really do. But... I don't think I could let you even if you were to offer. Why not? I had this realization today. You and I were just starting out, and if you'd have turned down this job, stay with me, you'd just end up resenting me. So I don't see that we have a choice. I'm sorry we'll never really know what would have happened. Let's face it, statistically speaking, most relationships don't make it. We're probably saving ourselves a whole load of heartache down the road. Still, 
I'm glad it was you. I'm glad it was me what? I pretty much figured that I was through with relationships. I'm glad it was you that got me back on the horse. I'm glad it was you that got me back on the horse, too. One injury, one accident, and the place will be ours. Rudy, I find your villainous mind to be absolutely delicious. By the way, how'd you get those ferrets in here without anyone seeing you? Through the delivery entrance. So simple. They ought to do it. What? This quintuples the speed of the ball return, so the ball coming back may just jump off the track and land on somebody's foot. Wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> what are you doing? I thought now would be a good time for a big fake evil laugh. Phil! For what possible reason could you need me here at 2 o'clock in the morning? Big Rudy. Ed, this is the man responsible for the sabotage of one Stucky Bowl bowling center. What? What? That's right, Rudy. I've captured everything on those security cameras over there. You, sir, have been served up like a trout on a sterling silver platter. I trusted you. You made a classic mistake, sir. You tried to get me to take sides against the family. Thanks, pal. You're welcome, Bosco. Now let's get his most heinous crime on videotape. Um, Big Rudy, I swear, I can't you do anything else to damage Ducky Ball. I'll press charges. Okay. You see, Ed, he increased the rate of speed on the ball return such that... Is that absolutely necessary? I think so.